All right, so this is a quick uh, video to show you how to calculate the measures of variability um, for any, any variable that you might have in the General Social Survey data set. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, you know where we live, analyze, we're going to come over to analyze, we click on descriptive statistics, and then we're going to click on um, frequencies. Okay, I'm going to display variable names. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an interval ratio level variable because I can like just show more of the measures of variability. So what I do, I'm going to click age. Okay. Interval ratio level variable, click it. Then in order to calculate the measures of variability, similar to what we did um, with the measures of central tendency. So we come up here, we're going to click on this statistics box. Okay. Now, I'm just going to click on the mean and then the median and the mode just because we did that uh, for chapter three. But I'm also going to click on, because we have interval ratio level data, standard deviation, variance, range, the minimum, and then the maximum. Um, now, obviously, this varies which, which measure of dispersion you can use. It varies based on what level of measurement your variable is, is measured at. So if you have nominal level data, well, you can't calculate standard deviation or variance or range or minimum or maximum for, for that matter. So the only measure of variability that you can calculate for nominal level data is IQV. And as you can see, there's no IQV here. So what do you need to do? You need to hand calculate it. Now, is there any way that SPSS can calculate uh, IQV? Yes, but it, it's kind of tricky and we're not going to show you. Uh, you. You won't really need to do it for this class. So it's a little bit too complex to show, but there is a way to do it, but you're not going to learn it. Okay. Now what we can also do is we can calculate quartiles. So if you all remember like the 25th, 75th percentile, the 50th percentile is obviously the median. So we can calculate the quartiles as well. And I'm going to press continue and then I'm going to press OK. Now it's going to display both the frequency distribution and uh, it's also going to provide me the statistics up here. Okay, so for example, um, let's just look at the first thing, the mean. The mean is 48.69, which means that the average age or the mean age in the GSS data set that we're looking at is 48.69 years, the median is 48. Um, since the mean and the median are relatively close, our distribution is what we refer to as a symmetrical distribution. The mode is uh, 34. Standard deviation is 17.993. Um, now the variance is 323.743, but the standard deviation is easier to interpret and understand as we discussed already. So um, I think it's more important to focus on the standard deviation. It tells you how much dispersion there is in the uh, distribution. And the standard deviation, you, you don't really know much unless you also have the mean as well, okay? The range is 71 because the minimum value is 18 because the GSS doesn't survey under anybody under the age of 18, only surveys adults. And then the oldest age is 89 or older, so the range is 18 to 89, which is 71. It also provides us, however, with the 25th, okay, which is the first quartile, the 50th per quart, uh, percentile, uh, which is the median, so for the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, which is the median, and the 75th percentile, which is obviously the third quartile, which is 63. So even though it doesn't directly give us the IQR, it does give it directly give us the range, it doesn't directly give us the IQR. We already know what the IQR is because we know that the IQR or the interquartile range is Q3, which we know is the 75th percentile, which we know is 63. Subtracted by Q1, which is the 25th percentile, which we know is 34. So 63 minus 34, we know that our IQR is equal to 29. Now, in addition to producing the uh, measures of central tendency and the measures of dispersion this way. There's another thing that you can do, which is you can go about creating a box plot. Now, now the way you're going to go about doing this is you can come over here and we're going to go to analyze. You can use the explore procedure. So you go to analyze, descriptive the statistics, then we're going to come over here to explore. Okay. Now I'm going to display variable names 
And let's just say that we want to do this with education level. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to find education. Education in this sense is actually interval ratio. So when we're using the variable degree, um, degree is, you know, ordinal because it's like looks at graduate, bachelor's, associate's, high school, less than high school, and so on. So that's ordinal. With education, um, it's actually looking at the number of years you spent in, in school. So this is actually an interval ratio level variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the dependent list. Now here it says it's going to display both statistics and it's going to display uh, the plots. So it's going to provide a certain like graphic devices such as a stem and leaf uh, plot and a box plot. Now I'm, I, I want to look at the box plot, but I'm actually not concerned about a stem and leaf plot because this textbook doesn't actually talk about it a lot. So you're not going to be tested on it. So I, I see no point in actually showing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to this plot section and like I said stem and leaf by default is just checked already but I'm actually not interested in that so I'm going to go ahead and like uncheck that and press continue and then I'm going to go here go ahead and check out these statistics so it's going to provide me the 95% confidence interval that's looks good press continue and then I'm going to press okay okay now now it has uh, provided me with a box plot here, and it has provided me the mean. So the mean uh, year, highest year of school completed is uh, 13.71, okay? And I know that the minimum would be zero, so I guess there's some people have in this data set who had zero years of education possibly, and then the maximum would be 20. But I know that uh, those would be, if there are anybody who actually answered yes to, to any of those, um, the, those are the extreme cases. Most people don't go to school for 20 years and then the vast majority of people don't actually have any zero years of education. So most people have some type of like formal schooling in the United States. So those would be the extreme cases. So how do we go about finding the IQR? Well, there, well there's a couple different ways. One, we can just kind of look at this. So we know that the mean is 13.71, uh, which suggests that the mean is right here. And then the... Uh, IQR is four, so it's simply going to be two above this and then two below this. So that's one way we can go about calculating our uh, IQR. And so that's how we go about creating a box plot as well. So that's how we could go about getting the uh, IQR um, for this. IQR is uh, four, the range is 20. So as you can see, since the range is using the most extreme scores in the distribution, um, and those extreme scores are somewhat atypical, the IQR, the interquartile range, is just a much better uh, measure of variability for this data. Okay. Um, and that is uh, it for this um, video.